Uh, we were shaken. We had skull fractures and broken ribs and broken arms and legs. Keep in mind, we were like three months old. I just know that my birth mom could not handle four babies at once and she refused to go back on her medication. Being a little kid, you don't really have a lot of worries and we didn't really worry about that growing up until we kind of understood it and our, our minds matured to a point where we were like, oh crap, like we were almost killed. So the trial to me didn't make sense. It was more like a waste of time because it's obvious what happened and whether she remembers doing it or not, it was done. The kids were eventually placed into foster care because of the abuse. But at least we had Brandon and he was safe. And the other, the two boys and Hannah was safe. So when it was my turn to hold Brandon, I picked him up, put him on my shoulder, and I felt the shape of his head. And I just walked the floor and cried. And I asked God to be gracious and merciful. I couldn't understand, and I still don't, how somebody could abuse somebody so innocent like that. Where do I come from? What is my story? I would say I was one of the Avondale quadruplets and someone would start crying and say, bless you. I was probably around 10. My brother and I would kind of just ask my mom, like, you know, where do we come from? And uh, my mom told us to watch like a videotape of the news. Every single thing I read, I went, wait, whoa, whoa, backtrack this. This happened to me? Wait, this happened to Michael? This happened to Matthew? This happened to Brandon? Like, how can you do that? How can you do that to some baby, let alone four healthy quadruplet babies? It's, it's still kind of sinking in. Why couldn't we all be together? Because it's hard, because I mean, I know siblings that are adopted and they're together. And everyone asks me, well, why weren't you guys together? And I kind of just say, well, it was a tough situation. We all had medical needs that one home couldn't take care of all at once. Have a good night. You too, thank you. Hey, buddy. I forgive her what she did to me and the boys, me, Michael, and Matthew. I forgive her just because we were fortunate enough to overcome what happened to us, but I will never forgive her in my heart for what she did to Brandon. I couldn't because he was supposed to be just like us and he's not. Laughing and smiling and looking at you. They had told us he was cortically blind and deaf, would never walk, talk, would never eat, might live to be 10. Come on, head up high. A smile so big, it lights up the sky. He turned 18 this year. It's kind of hard to think about because who would do this to a person, you know? Um, especially a baby who's this big, but did it to all four of us and one just happened to cry more than the rest. I think it has helped having him in our life because we have a whole new perspective on a lot of things in life. Yeah, kind of we could, we could be in just a situation like just like that, but we're not. Well, I found out at a young age what my prognoses were um, just because when I found out my story I kind of asked that question like what was I diagnosed with because I kind of wanted to set a bar for myself like how can I overcome these odds and not let them define who I am I don't know I feel like I would have been doing better in school that really messed me up because we we weren't able to like keep up with everybody else Maybe and we would have to learn different ways it's cool School was very hard for me. I didn't enjoy it. I actually had tears in my eyes walking across that stage because it was just like I did it. For a lot of people that knew my story, um, I think that was just a proud moment just because that's a big milestone for all of us to graduate high school. I just proved some doctor somewhere in the state of Arizona wrong. We're not like broken. Um, like we can, we can have a full conversation. I don't need pity because that's not who I am anymore. Because I know people that have known me for years and then find out that I'm an Avenue Quad and then I get patronized. I want to be a pastor. He's God. Nothing can go against God. 
So if God's holding you up, you're obviously doing something right. You're obviously here for a reason. A lot of people thought we would have like mental illness or they thought we would have disabilities or things like that. But we have gone above and beyond. Even Brandon has. He is not supposed to be here, but he is. So even he himself has gone above and beyond. I do not want her out. I don't agree with it. In my opinion, she should still be in there. Be given her sentence because she tried to kill four people. I have forgiven her in my heart. And I guess you could say I've given it to God. I don't worry about it. I don't stress about it. I want nothing to do with that woman. Mm -mm. I want zero things to do with her. We're 18. We're about to start our new chapter. What you read 17 and a half years ago is not who we are today. Two of us are going to college and the other two are doing their own thing. I'm a quadruplet. I'm not one of, I'm an Avondale quad. I'm not one of the Avondale quadruplets anymore. I kind of don't let it define who I am and I never have and I never will.